When we looked at examples of edges that are bridges, what we noticed was that if the original graph was connected, in every example that we had tried, the number of connected components of the graph after that edge was removed was equal to 2. And in this video we're going to show that this is actually not just a coincidence, but that it's always the case. So let's start off. Proof. We're going to let E be the edge that is a bridge and it has n vertices u and v. So E is a bridge, a bridge, and because E is a bridge we know that u and v are in different different components. of G after we remove the edge E. And we saw this fact in the video on the, on the definition of a bridge. So what we know is that there are now at least two components in the graph G without E because U and V are in different components. So that means that the number of connected components of G without E is at least two. But what we want to show is that it's not more than two. And the way that we will do this is we will visualize, so here's u and here's v, and in the graph without edge e, so I'm just going to draw e as being dotted, what we want to do is in this graph, g without e, we want to find for every other vertex that there would be a path between it and v or between it and u. And if we can show that, then we'll know that every other vertex either belongs in the same component as the, that with v or in the same component as the one that it ha contains u. So here's how we do this. Well, we know that the original graph g is connected. And that means that for any of these vertices w, there will be a path from w to v in the big graph g. So let me write this down. Let w be any vertex of g. And since g is connected, g connected, that means that there is a path from W to any other vertex we like. So that means that there exists a path from W to V in the graph G, in G. So remember, the graph G is the whole graph together with the edge E. So there's two choices right now. Either this path P contains the edge E in this graph, or it does not. So if P does not, does not use edge E, well, then we have a path. So if P does not use the edge E, then it goes like this, somehow to V without using the edge E. So then P is also a path, a path from W to V in G without the edge E. So that means that W is in the same component as V. But it's also the possible that P used the edge E. So let's take a look at that case and maybe I'll use a different color. So now if P uses the edge E, that means that when we're traveling in the original connected graph, to get to V, we have to use the edge E, like this. So if P uses the edge E, then P really is a path which takes you from W to U and then to V. And of course this part is using the edge E. But then we know that there is, so there is a path, is a path from W to U in G without E. And that was what we wanted to show. We wanted to show that this W vertex, it was chosen at random, any vertex in the graph G, there will be a path either from W to V or from W to U. And that's what we just showed. These paths from W to V or from W to U exist in the graph which does not include the edge E in G minus E. What that tells us 
is that every vertex in the graph without the edge E is connected either to V or to W. And so that means that you can have at most two components. We cannot have three or more components. So therefore, the number of components of G without E is equal to two. All right, so that completes the proof. And now we know that if we remove a bridge edge in a connected graph, the number of components in the remaining graph is equal to two.